done before. Most of y'all know when I get a word from the Lord in the scripture, I might give you like one or two verses and then preach it verse by verse and do some stuff. But man, I'm going to have to read you this whole story. And I'm not going to make you stand up for the whole story, but I'm going to get you to stand up maybe the last two verses because I like to stand on the reading of the word. But, but I'll let you sit for just a minute if you don't mind. Because this is a, a good bit, but I've got to read you this whole story in the Bible. Because God has put something in my spirit. I know it's Palm Sunday, y'all, but I cannot, I, I just can't get into a religious thing. Come on, y'all. i got to do what the Spirit of God tells me to do and to speak. Amen. Now, I want to read this. It's found in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, and we're going to start with verse 22. When you get 22, say amen. Luke 8, 22. Amen. I got one amen. Praise God. Was that Cindy? Amen. Wow, Cindy, you fast, huh? Praise the Lord. We got a scholar in the house. Luke 8, 22. And you got to say amen. Amen. Okay, let me read a little bit of this, then I'll have us to stand. We'll pray one more time so that hopefully that God can use us for this word and bring it down in simplicity, maybe so that we can understand. I, I do realize this a lot of times, y'all, when we read a story out of the Bible, it's like sometimes we just look at the main, something main, the main thing just sort of sticks out. But there's something in here that God has really showing, has really shown me today, over the past week, really, he's been stirring this up, but... There's a word he wants to show you today, and, we, and we're going to get it. But let's start with verse 22. It starts with a storm. It says, Now it came to pass on a certain day, this is Luke chapter 8, verse 22, that he went into a ship with the disciples, talking about Jesus. He said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake, or let us go to the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. There came down a storm of wind on the lake. They were all filled with water and were in jeopardy. They came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, he rebuked the wind and the raging of the sea, and they ceased and was a calm. He said unto them, Where is your faith? They, being of faith, wondered one to another, What manner of man is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Verse 26, They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. When he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils for a long time. He wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice he said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God most high? I beseech you, Torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him. He was kept bound with chains and in fetters. He broke the bands, was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What's your name? He said, Legion. Because many devils were entered into him. They besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him and he, that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. In other words, he let them go into the swine. Then the devils went out of the man, entered into the swine. The herd ran violently down a steep place into the land and were choked. And they who fed them saw that what was done, they fled. They went and told it to the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done. They came to Jesus. They found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Could y'all please stand on your feet and let's finish up these last four verses. Or these last three, three verses or four. Verse 36, they also which told it <clears throat> them by what means he who was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought Jesus 
that he might be with him. But Jesus went away and said, or but Jesus sent him away, saying, "Return to your own house. Show how great things God has done unto you." He went his way, published it throughout the whole city, how great things Jesus had done unto him. Father, I thank you right now for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is life. Father, I ask now that you would anoint this vessel. Let me be an oracle speaker of your word, Father. Lord, touch every heart. Prepare our hearts even right now, Father, to receive your word. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. Can we give God one more big old clap of praise for you? See you. Come on, y'all. Come on. Give God a big old clap of praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Well, praise the Lord. You can be seated. Y'all, when the Lord starts stirring this in my spirit, I just got to give it to you. Amen. I wanted you to see something. A lot of times we'll skim a story. We don't really get to the point of a story. We see facts. We see different things. But there's always a point to a story. A lot of times it's a little deeper than what we understand. And I'm just so excited about this because I believe everybody in here, we can be excited about what God's doing in your life. When you see what, uh, let me get to this. First of all, we see there was a storm, y'all. This storm came to the country of the Gadarenes. Everybody say Gadarenes. Now this man comes running to Jesus. I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit here until we get into something. This man comes running to Jesus. He falls at his feet and he begins to worship. I want you to see that, amen. He's bowing down. He's worshiping, okay. The unclean spirits cry out in torment, okay. They say, torment me not. These unclean spirits that are in this man. The man's trying to worship. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. The man's trying to worship, but something's wrong with his worship. Oh, come on, y'all. Hold on with me. Y'all hearing this. I want you to think about this for a minute. He's trying to worship. Something's wrong. And it just seems weird, probably even to these disciples. And it probably seems... How many can tell when somebody's worshiping weird... Somebody have me up in here. Can't you tell when something's weird about a person? And you just know, I mean, right in that person. They, they're acting a little weird. They're doing different. They're trying to worship God. But they ain't really worshiping God in spirit and in truth. A conversation takes place. And this is so important, y'all. Some words come out of this man's lips. And what comes out is, he says, Son of God. Oh Lord, I want you to you know, mark in your Bible. Out of the man's lips comes these words, Son of God. What have I to do with you, Jesus? You Son of God, Most High. Think about that for a minute, church. This is the first time that something like this is coming out of a man's mouth. Even the disciples ain't calling Jesus the Son of God. Come on, y'all. They're not even at this point of time calling him the Son of God. Yet out of this man who's bound by all these legion of demons comes these words. Oh, Lord, what have I do to, with you? You Jesus, Son of God. Now, negotiation begins with these unclean spirits that's in this man. And, and there, here's the conversation. Here, here's, here's the negotiation, y'all. If we have to leave this man, don't make us leave the territory. Oh, Lord, help me up in here, Jesus. Here's the title of this message God put in my spirit. It's all about your territory. Come on, church. Think about it for a minute. It's all about your territory. Your influence. Where God wants you to be. The people he wants you to minister to. You're going to understand this in a little bit. Go, oh, Lord, help me up in here. Jesus cast out the legion of demons that's in this man, okay? They go into the swine. Now, because they don't want to leave the territory, they go into the swine. They're asking if they can go into the swine. Maybe they think those pigs will stay alive with some demonic spirits in them. But when you read the story, the, the swine did what? They drowned themselves. They just run off the cliff and drowned themselves. That's against the nature of a pig. Y'all to jump off of a cliff. Amen. 
but they jumped off that cliff and they, and they drowned themselves. Now what happens in the story, the herdsmen, they go and tell all the city what has happened. And all of the city, everybody in that city has come out to see this thing that has happened. All the Gadarenes in this country of Gadarenes are coming out. Can I tell you something right now? You are under attack for a reason. Anybody up in here ever been under an attack? I got to thinking about when we started this ministry, we started building this church. Good Lord! It's like every devil in hell come up and said, God, I mean, obstacle upon obstacle upon obstacle. I really believe that the devil knows what God has for you before you even know it. Amen. Come on, and, and the enemy's always trying to stop the purpose and the plan God has for your life. He started before you ever even knew God had something for you. You was in a storm before you. You said, good Lord, why, why am I in this storm? There's a storm happening and you don't even know why it's happening because of what God has for you and the enemy even knows it and you don't. Amen. Things begin to happen. We begin to wonder, why am I in this storm? Why am I going through this? Now think about this. Jesus went through a storm to get to this one demon-possessed man. How many storms has he went through to get to me and you? Y'all think about that for a minute. Jeremy, think about that, brother. How many storms has the Lord actually been through to get to you? To get you to a place where He wants you to be? Everybody here, before you ever know your destiny, before I ever knew I was going to pastor, come on, church. Before I knew I'd ever pastor a multicultural church, that means having black and white. A storm come in my life. I mean, I was probably only 16 years old. And a black boy put a pencil through my lip at school. After I tossed him over a couple of chairs or whatever, whatever. But see what I'm saying? Even then, it's like a prejudiced spirit could have rose up in me, storm coming before I even know what God has for my life. Can I get amen up in here? Now check this out. Jesus is doing something here. And this is what I've always missed when I've read this story and looked at it. Jesus is expanding his territory. Mm, oh, Lord, help me up in here. I hope y'all get this spirit like I do. Anytime you expand your territory, you can expect a fight. Anytime you're about to get to the purpose God has for you, your destination, your destiny, you can expect a fight. It's a fight, y'all listen to me now, over your territory. What used to belong to you, the devil has it now. Why? Because Adam sold us out. Somebody help me up in here. And God's trying to establish his kingdom again on this earth through you. You've got a certain place. You've got a certain territory that God wants you to be in. And guess what? You've got to get to that place and you've got to stand. And when all the hell comes against you, guess what? You've just got to stand. When the banks don't want to do right, you just got to stand. Come on, when the banks threaten to do this and that, you just got to stand. You got to know God give you the territory and he's the only one who can take it away. Come on, church. He is trying to establish his kingdom in a place. And you think there ain't going to be no fight? We got Christians don't want to fight. Don't want to stand. Don't want to go through nothing. But you, if you ever going to do something great for the Lord, come on. You're going to face some great battles. Yes. Don't be scared of the battle. Good Lord, what y'all see this? This is wonderful. It's time to take it back, really, while the enemy has stolen. Adam did sell us out, y'all. Come on. He, he messed up. And God's trying to give it back. Not the whole world. I don't need the whole world. I got a place right here on 290. God's told me to preach. Pastor, if you love the people, feed them. If you love the sheep, feed them. If you love my sheep, feed them. Come on, church. So this little, this little place right here, your influence, my influence, your destiny, my destiny, God is putting you in a place that's yours. So many people even right here, you're, you're in a place, a ministry, even in this ministry, it's yours. I tell Stan, Stan, the praise team is yours, brother. It ain't mine. I don't want no part of it, brother. That's yours. You lead. You guide. 
See what I'm saying? Lord, that youth is yours. It ain't mine. I ain't getting a part of that. That's your calling, not mine. I'm here to pastor. Come on. I'll help y'all again. But I ain't getting in there with a bunch of youth. It ain't my calling. Come on. Somebody help me up in here. That's yours. That's your, that's what, it's, your, it's your place. Everybody in here right now, you have a place. Can I get an amen up in here? Now watch this thing. You got to see this, okay? Sometimes we miss the point of the story because of the man's pain he's going through. Has anybody ever been in, in some pain? Has anybody ever felt like, good Lord. Well, Lord, what's going on here? Think about this man right here, y'all. He has no life. He's bound. He's in chains of darkness. Have you ever thought about that? The man's in chains of darkness, y'all. Think about this. The storm came out of nowhere to keep Jesus from getting even to the shore. Much less where the man is. There's a storm brewing. There's a storm there before Jesus can even get to the shoreline. There's a man that needs a touch. There's a man that needs deliverance, okay? Now, can I say this? The enemy knew who you were going to be before you ever got there. I don't know how. Don't ask me. Maybe something in the spiritual room. I don't know how you know this thing. People think the devil's stupid. People think he's not smart. Can I tell you, he's a lot smarter than me and you. He must be pretty, pretty smart. He got the first man to fall, didn't he? But the second Adam, he couldn't do nothing with. He's pretty smart, y'all. He can make us fall. He puts things in front of us. We fall for him. Got to get amen up in here. Now think about this. You see the storm started before the boat ever landed. Can I tell you this? Before your ship gets in, you're going to go through some storms. Golly. Anybody ever been on a cruise? We'll get to that destination. Sometimes you can be in a storm. Now watch this. If Jesus had not a rebuked the storm, guess what? He wouldn't be in the country of the Gadarenes. Sometimes, church, I stopped rebuking the devil. You know what I do? I said, the Lord, you rebuke him. Lord, you rebuke the devil. Your will be done. We can rebuke him all day long. Come on. Sometimes you just need to look at that storm and say, the Lord rebuke you. I'm going through this thing. I don't care what it is. I don't care how big it is, how big that storm is. I don't care if it's like a hurricane. I don't care if I'm right in the middle of it. Lord, you rebuke the enemy. Do what you got to do. Be, be to me what you want me to be. Now, the Gadarenes, let me tell you this, y'all. We're probably, the Gadarenes is probably occupied by Gentiles. You know how we know that? Because I can't see no Orthodox Jews raising a bunch of pigs. Come on. So we've probably got a place that's just full of Gentiles. Amen? Think about that for a minute. Now, when I'm reading this story, Jesus is talking. I'm wondering what he's talking about now. Is he talking about geography? Or is he talking about nationality? Because he's crossing barriers here, y'all. He's going into a territory. I mean, my Lord, he, he's going to a place. When he says going to the other side, he's going to a place. He, he's passing over regions and he's passing over cultures. He's going into a place where he's trying to get these people to come together. Sometimes it's so hard to get people to come together in church when you got black and white, red, yellow, green, and blue. Somebody help me up in here. Come on. I hate to say it, but there's still prejudice in the land. But there ought not be none in God's church. Somebody help me up in here. There's prejudice in God's church. Something is wrong. If there's prejudice in God's people, something is wrong. It's a blessing when people can come together, one mind, one accord, black, red, yellow, white, don't matter, and worship God, begin to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Come on, somebody help me up in here. When God can do that, good Lord, can you imagine what God can do? When you don't see color, when you don't see a difference. No such show ain't, is it? When your sister is your sister and your brother is your brother, no matter what color they are, no matter how much money they got, no matter how poor they are. Somebody help me up in here. Don't really matter. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now, watch this right here. He is crossing regions. He's crossing cultures. And, and whenever you cross regions and cultures, guess what? The devil gets hot. He gets mad. He knows something is fixing to happen. He, he knows his territory is getting in trouble. Now the last thing the devil wants y'all is to see all men. 
I don't care. Bowing down, worshiping God in spirit and truth. Like we was doing in here today, a little while ago. Worshiping God, praising the Lord. Coming together in oneness. How many enjoyed that? I loved it. Praise God. Now look at this. This man who's never met Jesus, he runs out. When he runs out, what does he do? He bows down. His own people, this man's own people, will not have anything to do with him. He's living in the tombs where dead people stay. Somebody help me up in here. I want to show you where this man's at. His own people won't have nothing to do with him. He's living in the tombs. He's around all these dead people. He is really surrounded by dead people. But guess what? He ain't dead. You ever been around a bunch of dead people? But you ain't dead? Oh, Lord, I could go somewhere over there, but I ain't. You ever been around a bunch of dead people just don't want to praise God, don't want to worship God, don't want to do nothing? Somebody help me up in here. Y'all don't get mad at me. You ever been around dead people who won't do nothing but complain and gripe? We ain't got none like that up in here. I praise God for that. Amen. Come on. But I've been around some dead pastors. Help me. Sometimes it seems like you might be the only one alive. You got all these dead people. They're trying to pull from you. They're trying to take you down, bring you down, get you to the same place they at. You got to learn to stand. Amen. Now, sometimes you just really need to check your surroundings. You can be around a bunch of dead people, but you don't got to be one of them. See, I don't care if nobody comes in here and gives God the praise. I don't care if nobody says anything. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up my mouth anyway. I'm going to give God the praise because he's worthy. I know where he's brought me from. I know what he's done in my life. So I don't care if nobody don't praise him. Guess what? I do the same thing at home, y'all. When I'm on my porch, I'm outside praising the Lord. My grandsons and my granddaughter will come out. They'll see me with my hands in the air. They go on, on the way to school, and he'll roll that window down, and he'll be doing this. Come on, y'all. I want everybody to see I'm praising the Lord. It's wonderful to praise him. It's wonderful to glorify Him. It's wonderful to worship the Lord. Not just in church, everywhere. Now watch this right here. When he saw life, when the man saw life, when he saw Jesus get off the boat, he ran to Him. This man is full of demons. Don't tell me the devils are running to Jesus because they don't want no part of Him. So it had to be a little bit of strength left in that man. He's running to life. He's running to Jesus. Now, he, he's left all those dead people and he's bowing down to the only one who can give him life. Sometimes we think the church or the pastor can give you life. Guess what? We can't give you life. Jesus gives you life. Come on. You got to focus on him. We can help. We can pray. We can believe. Come on. But God is the one who gives life. God is the one who bursts you into his kingdom. God is the one who calls you, not man. Can I get another amen up in here? Now, he fell at his feet. He's worshiping. He, he's worshiping the Lord, okay? But his worship, he's worshiping in torment. Why is he worshiping in torment? Because he's tormented, the Word of God says, by the devils. Can I get amen? So his worship, he's worshiping in torment because of this legion of devils that's in him. He can't get up. He can't worship in spirit and truth because the Bible says a house divided can't stand. Mm, somebody help me up in here. You can't have devils in you. Come on. A house divided cannot stand. And y'all looking at me. If I don't be worried, y'all ain't scared. Right? How many are born again and saved? <laughs> God, yeah, feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. I'm going to show you something. This man here is not right now. This man's got some issues, y'all. This man's got some problems in his life. This man needs somebody. Come on. He needs a life giver to come on the shore. And I'm telling you what. He's got a life giver now. His name is Jesus. Now, something you may not know. I'm going to tell you this. This is so important. When you're going through a battle. When you're going through some stuff. When you're going through a storm. Understand this. The devil don't care nothing about this man. The devil don't care nothing about you or me. Let me tell you something about the devil. He can use anything, anytime he, not anytime, he can use anything that he, that he gets authority to do, okay? But he can use a pig, he can use a dog, he can use a donkey, 
He can use a snake. He can use men and women. But it's not the person that he's really interested in. It's the person's territory. Good Lord. It's the place that he knows God has for that person. Come on. It's the place he knows that God has for you and I. That's what he's after. He wants that place. Y'all, he wants your territory. He don't want you to influence anybody. He don't want you establishing God's kingdom on this earth. Come on, y'all. The Bible says the kingdom of God's on the inside of us. Amen. And I believe we can stake our claim and we can take back what the devil has stolen. Somebody help me up in here. He don't want to leave the devil. The enemy does not want to leave the region. So you got to learn to stand and to fight. I'll say it again, y'all. When we began to build this church, we had to stand. And we had to stand with no backing of no denomination or nothing. We're a non-denominational church. Just believe and trust in God the whole time. He's built this house. He's built this ministry. He's done it all. And he always has come through for us every single time. Because he's the builder of the house. But you've got to stand. Don't, mount, don't, mount, don't mean you won't face nothing. Don't mean you ain't going to go through nothing in your personal life. You will, I promise you. If you do great things for the Lord, there's going to be some great battles again. I'll say that. So don't, here's what you got to learn. Don't take it personal. It ain't about you. It's about your destination. Too many people, they take it personal. You know, when some people don't like the way I preach and the way I sing, the way I do, guess what? I don't take it personal. It's like water on a duck's back. I don't really care. There's a hundred million churches around this world. Pick another one. Can I get amen up in here? There's a whole lot of churches. Y'all, I thank God. I wish there was a church on every corner. I'm tired of everybody saying, man, there's a beer joint on every corner. Let's put a church on every corner. Praise God. Wouldn't you rather have a church on every corner instead of a beer joint? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. So don't take it personal. The devil knew this man, y'all, was destined to be great in God's kingdom. And he knows you are too. Roy, you great in God's kingdom, brother, can I tell you? I'll never forget Roy come up and told me one time, he said, Pastor, I just want to take care of the grounds here. And I said, well, Roy, we got a family who takes care of the grounds right now. And, uh, and we gave them food for taking care of the grounds. And, and I said, that's wonderful, Roy. I'm glad you feel like it. And I asked him, Roy, what do you would like to have, you know, for taking care of the grounds? My Lord, that was the furthest thing from his mind and his heart, y'all. Amen. He didn't want nothing. He said, oh, she took my palm because she'll know I'll be throwing this thing all over the place. <laughs> you know how I am, don't you, darling? I'm already doing this. Thing. Come on, praise God. <laughs> But Roy didn't want nothing. He said, that's my ministry for the Lord. You know what I, and here's what I'm telling you, Roy. That is your ministry, brother. That's your, th th that's your, this is your property. This is your responsibility, brother. He takes care of y'all. And he does it because the goodness of his heart don't want a dime. Can we get some praise on that? Come on, y'all. And we got everybody in here doing that. We got, I mean, good Lord, Kathy, the director of the food bank. Now, I'm going to get in trouble now if I start naming all these people. But we got uh, uh, Ken, uh, Ken and Amanda, assistant pastors here. Kathy's the director of the food bank. She don't get paid. He don't get paid. Doing it for the goodness of the heart. Isn't that awesome? Amen. That's the kind of people we got here. We got 10 to 15 volunteers every Friday and Saturday to take care of this food bank. We got Brian and Gail now coming. Let me tell you something about Gail. She's been cleaning this whole sanctuary every Saturday, y'all. My Lord. Amen. Just cleaning it. And we got people cleaning in the middle of the week. Cleaning. Well, I'm sitting right there, Joanne Joey. and Joey, which is in the back. And we got Wendy. Lord, don't forget about Wendy, the secretary here, does all the film and does everything else. Good Lord, what a blessing she is, y'all. She is a blessing. And I, Lord, please forgive me if I'm going to lose somebody, Laura, who's doing the you. All these people are doing it because of the goodness because God's put it in their heart. Fran, being the leaders of the women's ministry, praise God, does a wonderful job, has a solid word. Everybody, Pat. That kitchen's her kitchen, praise God, hallelujah. And she'll fix a meal, y'all. Oh, she just fixes a meal for us. And now she's the women's ministry, praise God. So God is just moving, and we thank God for that. But let's get back, let me show you this. The devil knew this man was destined to be great in God's kingdom. He knows you are. That's why you've had the storms in your life. 
storms to keep you from getting where the Lord wants you to be. Now, I believe this, y'all. Y'all might not agree. That's fine. But uh, I believe the enemy had more faith in you than you had in yourself. Let me say that again. I believe the enemy had more faith in you than you've got in yourself. You know why? Look at the storms he put in your life to try to stop you. <laughs> Come on, think about that for a minute. He's putting storm, storm, storm because he knows something's, God's got something great for you. He knows God's got something great. All these storms are coming. He's got more faith in what you can become than you do. Come on, you need to get your faith up a, another notch or two. Come on, you need to know that God's got some, some plans for you. Good Lord, he's going to raise you up. You're going to be the head and not the tail. Come on, I don't care where you're at right now in that body. God says you're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed going in the city, blessed going in the field. God's going to raise you up. Come on. The enemy knows it. That's why the storms are there. That's why they started probably some of y'all when you was one, two, three, four, five years old. Things began to happen. Trying to stop. They happened in the, in the life of Jesus. Come on. Herod done killed all them babies, drowned them in the river trying to stop that seed from coming. But guess what? The seed came anyway. Hallelujah. Jesus came anyway. And I'm telling you, the seed God's put in you, it's going to come forth anyway. Come on. Somebody help me up in here. That seed's going to bring forth exactly what God wants you to bring forth. You've got a destiny. You've got a purpose. He was afraid. The enemy was afraid of this man. He was afraid of what he would become. And he's just afraid of you and who you're going to become in God's kingdom. He's like a roaring lion. Stand your ground. Don't worry about it. When you've done all to stand, just stand. Can I get another amen? We're almost through. Hang on with me. Jesus came through the storm just for this demon-possessed man. How many storms has he come through, y'all, just to get to you and to me? The enemy could keep... If, if, G, if, if the enemy couldn't keep Jesus from getting to the shore, and he couldn't because Jesus come through the storm, okay? If he couldn't, guess what? The devil always does this. Now, he couldn't keep Jesus from stepping on that shoreline. He couldn't keep, keep Jesus from getting to the man. You know what he wants to do now? Jesus has cut a deal. Yeah. Come on. He wants to cut a deal. Because he don't want you to have everything you're supposed to have. So many Christians settle for half of what God really wants them to have. Somebody help me up in here. Good Lord. The, listen to the, the, the enemies, the, the legion of death said, I know who you are. You are the son of God. Even though most of these people around don't know who you are, I know who you are. I know you've got the power to run me out of here. you got the power to run me out of this territory. Think about this for a minute, y'all. These legions of demons know that Jesus has the power to cast them out. What do they want to do? They want to stay in the territory. That's why they said, let us go into the swine. Because the swine are still in the territory. Oh, somebody help me up in here. God don't, I mean, the enemy don't care if he, if he loses a man or a woman. They get saved, they get born again, they get delivered. But he don't want them to have no territory. He don't want them to have no influence. Good Lord, y'all. I used to do drugs. I used to be an alcoholic. I know where I was at. But guess what? God's given me territory now. Hallelujah. He's given me something that, that at one time, God oh Lord, it was about to destroy me. About to kill me. So they're wanting to stay in that region. They don't want to go nowhere because it's a familiar place. Oh, somebody help me up here on that. He won't see the devil really wants to keep a representative in the territory. Because as long as he has a representative, guess what? It still belongs to him. It's when that representative is gone. It's when that representative is out of there that Jesus can do something else. He can set up who he wants to in that territory. Oh, Lord, help me up in here now. I'm almost about to get ahead. I got you. To, you got to see this thing, though. The only way the enemy can claim ownership of a place is if he has a representative there. Oh, we ain't got a clue about this spiritual battle we're going through. I got news for the devil. God don't compromise. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I think 
you, Jeremy. Praise God. And thank you for that amen, Gil. I heard it clear as a bell. Clear as a bell. The devil does not compromise. I mean, the, the Lord does not compromise. The devil does. God don't. The enemy is about to lose his territory because his representative is no longer going to be his. He's going to have a new master. Oh, good Lord. He's going to belong to somebody else. This man who once belonged was possessed, bound by the devil, is fixing to be delivered and set free. He's going to have somebody else as his master, as his savior, as his Lord. Now, what Jesus has done, he stepped off the land. He stepped on the land. He came through the storm. He cast the enemy out of the man. And I've got to tell you something about this man, y'all. I believe this man was tough. You tough, brother. I'm telling you right now, you tough. This man should have been dead. This man could have killed himself. This man could have said, it ain't worth it, I quit. I've been living out here with all these dead. I mean, he's chained up, he's bound, he ain't got no clothes on. A legion of devils is in him. He could have gave up a long time ago. You know what? He didn't give up. Brother, you've been through some stuff, but you didn't give up. Mm, Lord, I love this thing. I've been through some stuff, church, but I didn't give up. I've been left alone. I've been deserted in my life by a bunch of different people. But I didn't give up. I didn't quit. I didn't end it all. I didn't say it ain't worth it. When I didn't even know the Lord, this man, as of right now, being bound, didn't even know the Lord. He's all bound up, church. This man is tough. This man is a man that God just wants to get his hands on. Oh, Lord, we have been here. Even though he, he has survived, y'all, he survived and the swine died. He's alive, pigs are dead. Don't tell me this man ain't tough. Don't tell me this man ain't got something in him. Come on, y'all, a willpower. Got to be something better. The man is delivered, the pigs are drowned. The herdsman. They ain't never seen nothing like this. They ain't never seen a bunch of pigs run off a cliff. Come on. And drown themselves. They're, 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 I mean, they're just shocked. So they go into the city. They tell everyone. He's, he's telling everybody in the city. And guess what? The whole city comes out to see Jesus. Now there's something I'm going to say. Because I always miss this in this story. I've always missed the point. The whole point of this story. I want you to think about this. Watch this. They all see Jesus, but they're not ready to receive him. Right. You ever had people come in church? You want them to be saved. You want them to be delivered. You want them to be born again. But a lot of times they just ain't ready. Yo, I wasn't ready a long time ago. I just wasn't ready. Thank God in August of 1992, I got ready. Hallelujah. Woo, praise the Lord. And God touched me, delivered me, set me free, brought me up. But the whole city comes out. They're not ready to receive them. It's just like many people today. You can't drag somebody to the altar and get them saved. Y'all, it don't work. You got to do it in your own will, own timing. So when Jesus, here's what I love. Here's what I've always missed. When Jesus starts to leave, the man who was bound and is now delivered, he asked Jesus something. Think about this, y'all. He asked Jesus, can I go with you? Good Lord, hallelujah. He asked Jesus, can I go with you? That's a, my Lord, that's legitimate. I'm saying, golly. When the man's been delivered, God set him free. Jesus has done all this miracle in his life. Lord, I'd want to go with him too, wouldn't you? I mean, I want to be right there with you. Jesus, can I go with you? Can I go? And I've always wanted to say, it seems like a harsh statement. It seems real hard because the Lord says, no. You can't go with me. Oh, gosh, you've got to say this. That's what Jesus said to the man. He said, no, you can't go with me. He said, look at this. I've always wondered why he just had to say no. 
But here's what Jesus he said, I want you to do this. I want you to return to your own house. I want you to show, show how great things God has done for you. I, oh Lord, he, the Bible says he went and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. You see what I'm saying? He went and told the whole city what God is doing. I told you, God, the devil done lost his representative in the region. Now God's got his representative in the region. Oh Lord, somebody help me up in here. God has brought that man to a place. He said, no, you're my representative for this city. Hallelujah. We're going to take the city by storm. Good Lord, somebody help me up in here. You see what I'm saying, brother? A destiny for this man who was possessed, bound. He said, Golly, I'm so glad God's no respect to persons. I'm so glad it don't matter where you've been. I don't, it don't matter where you at. If you'll just say, here I am, Lord. Good Lord. He rose this man up. He said, you're my representative for this whole city. And he spread the gospel. They might not all got saved in one day or two days or maybe a year or two years. But they can't argue with what God has done. Look what he's done for me. I'm believing the whole city got saved eventually. Come on, somebody help. Do you see your destiny? Do you see your influence on people? You see where God wants to place you if you'll just let him. Y'all, he crossed the storms for you. He came through the storm for you, brother. He come through the storm. And I know all y'all think I've always had it together. You ain't never had no bad spirits in you. But guess what? I had them in me. They had to be out. They had to go. Yes, yes. We all think we're born Christians, I guess. We all think we're born with the Holy Spirit. That's why you got to be born again. You got to let the Holy Spirit come in. Yes. Get rid of all them other spirits. Got to get an amen up in here. Yes. See, when the Holy Spirit moves in, all the other ones got to go. <laughs> Somebody help me up in here. Get the Lord thank you. So the Lord now has a representative in the land. The region now belongs to God. The influence of the devil is now gone. All the land is hearing the good news. It's all about your territory. Come on, somebody. Y'all stand on your feet. Give God a clap of praise. Come on. Come on, stand on your feet. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Don't take it personal, church. It's all about the territory. It's all about where God wants to put you. It's all about your destiny. It's all about the influence that you're going to have on other lives. See, if he can stop that, he can win the battle. But I, I'm a firm believer. If Jesus come through the storm for me, if he put his feet down on the shore for me, if he got rid of all that mess that was in me, oh, Lord, hallelujah, I can't help but praise him. I can't help but worship him. I can't help but give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Can I get amen up in here? Can we give God one more big old clap of praise? Come on. Man. Now, I, I was really struggling to preach this message today because I said, Lord, I know we're doing communion. I said, how am I going to... Because I'm always thinking, about how am I going to turn this thing to another gear and let's do communion now? But then I got to thinking, you know what? None of us in here, I mean nobody, would even be worthy to do communion. How many realize that? What makes you worthy, make, what makes you pure, what makes you holy is Jesus. We've all fell short of God's glory. We know that. You know, a lot of people take the word out of context and they, and they, and y'all can be seated for a minute, all right? If you would, just be seated. People take the word out of context. They go back to what Paul was talking about and they say, well, if you take the bread and you drink the juice unworthily, you can get sick or die. And it's because they don't understand what God is really saying. Paul was rebuking the Corinthians. You know why he was rebuking them? They were doing communion like we're fixing to do right here in just a minute. If I can get Ken and Amanda to come up here, please. And Danny, would you come up here? Ken and Amanda, if you'd get on this side over there. Me and Danny, get over here. They were fixing to do communion. And you know what they were doing in Corinth? They were making a feast out of it. Some of them was just making a feast. Elaborate meals. And let me, I hate to say this, y'all. But even in this church, they was getting drunk. Read it. It's in 1 Corinthians. They talk about that. So Paul rebuked them. He said, y'all are not respecting the body and the blood of Jesus. Y'all, the reason we do communion is because this bread, we know it's not his body, but it represents his body. 
This bread, we do this in reverence of the Lord. His body was laid down for us, y'all. His body was broken for us. The juice represents the blood he shed. Y'all, without the shedding of blood, we have no remission of sins. We reverence that. We acknowledge that. None of us in here are worthy. Jesus makes you worthy. When you trust him, you believe him. Now I'm going to pray now, Father. I'm going to ask Fran if she'd get up over here and stand. We're going to start on this end. I think Pat may be going to do it on that end if you stand another Pat. And I want to pray, Father, I thank you right now for this time of reverence, Father. When we reverence your word, we do what your word has told us to do, Father. Lord, you wanted to do the, your supper with your disciples. Lord, you said in your word, as they were eating, you took bread, you blessed it, you broke it, you gave it to the disciples, you said, take, eat, this is my body. Lord, you took the cup, you gave thanks, and you gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And Jesus, you said, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine till that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And Lord, we know today as we partake of this communion, as we partake of this bread and this cup, Lord, we thank you right now. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor for what you've done, for laying down your body, for shedding your blood. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. You are so worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Father, we praise you and we thank you. God, we're going to do communion different than we ever have. We're actually going to take this bread. I'm going to break this bread. And we're going to start over here. We're going to have you just come here and, and let you get your own bread. When you get your bread, we want you to dip it. Uh, Ken and Amanda will be holding that glass of wine. They'll be holding that wine. I mean, not wine. I'm sorry. That's juice. It's not wine. I promise you it's juice. And I want you, what we're going to do is let you dip into that, into that juice. And then when you dip the bread in that juice, go ahead and take it right there. And when you take bread, I'm going to speak a blessing over you. I don't know. Whatever the Spirit of God says. Amen. We're going to speak. And, and let me tell you something about this man right here, y'all. He knows Hebrew. And he's going to speak a Hebrew blessing. I mean, whatever God puts in time, it's awesome. Praise God, y'all. What God is going to do here today. And we do this in reverence of the Lord. Now, before we get started, Kim, would you take that glass? Let me break this bread like Jesus. I think Jesus would have just sort of broke this bread. And I've washed my hands, y'all. Boy, this bread's tough, let me tell you. Jesus is tough, too. Tougher than that man, wasn't he? Praise God. Before we do, Ken, I want you to take that, that uh, glass. We're going to... We're going to, I'll take this. We're going to let Grace, because we know Grace, you have a hard time getting up here. And we're going to let you, we're going to serve you right now. Honey. Let you get your bread and dinner. And I'm going to pray a blessing over you, darling. Praise God. If you just take the bread.